Since 1983, fame has helped business and education work for Maine. Contact the authority, the finance authority of Maine. You're watching Maine Biz Sunday, Maine's business news source. We're back with Elliot Cutler, independent candidate for governor. We did some broad questions in the first segment. I want to drill down a little more candidate-specific stuff coming forward here now. I want to talk about uh, expanding markets and exports, because uh, you have some particular uh, expertise in that area. You've recently uh, did some work in China. You've spent some time there. Uh, and uh, you've been quoted as saying that uh, with the, uh, the great products we make here in Maine, we can make trade with China two-way street. China is the fastest growing big economy in the world. It's a market that holds huge potential for Maine. Uh, talk to me a little bit well, about you know, that. When you, when you go into a Walmart or a, or a Martins today and you buy anything, it's likely that 75 to 90 percent of what you buy in a Martins or a Walmart is made in China. Mm -hmm. And so what you're doing is you're paying the Chinese for products, and it's a one-way street. Our balance of payments with China, both, both in Maine and generally, is enormously out of our favor. We can restore that because we have extraordinary products, whether they're lobsters or blueberries or, or all kinds of Maine products. Well, let me, we let me stop you there. What are the other products? What kinds of things? Oh, my goodness. Furniture. Okay. They're going to make it, and they're going to buy you it. You know, I'll tell you why, Alan. Okay. It's our brand, and we have not done a very good job of building and sustaining the main brand. And the main brand should cover everything, not several different brands. Okay. One big brand covers the experience you have living in Maine. It covers our food. It covers... The paper, right. it covers right. our furniture. E and then, every state's seeing this China. Everybody and our boats this, and our ships. Well, everybody's seeing this emerging Chinese market yeah. uh, as it's building a middle class eventually and yes. they're going to buy products. How are we, I, how are we, how are we going to get the main I'll name? I'll tell you how, how you, will we I'll, do. I'll, I'll tell, I've already done it. I brought the chairman, the CEO of the largest food importing company in China, Kafka, okay. to the United States, to Maine, took him out on a lobster boat, showed him how you harvest lobsters, Took them to a lobster processing plant. We're talking about exporting okay. millions of pounds of Maine lobster to China. Same thing with blueberries. And you you can't you can't go to China and explain Maine to China. You have to bring them here. Okay. And I've done that, and I'll keep doing it. Well, that was one of the questions I was going to follow up on. But let me let me go, go back. Ahead. Let me go back sure. to the brand because the brand I want the brand is really important. Okay. It is, an, it is an undeveloped competitive advantage for the state. We've got to develop it. We have a brand. The Chinese were more aware of sustainability and traceability and the importance of building the main brand for, for clean, pure foods in China than we are. Mm -hmm. And there's something wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So marketing that brand is going to be important and bringing people here. Investing in it, sustaining it, marketing it, bringing people here to see it. So that's an investment. That's a cost that the state will have to bear. You'll have to build it in. And there's a you know, how will you but measure payback investment? So fast. I mean, when, if 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 we can sell several million pounds of lobsters and blueberries to China, it's going to build the price. Okay. It's going to build the market. Are we talking fresh lobsters or processed? We're probably going to start with frozen product. That's mm -hmm. what they want to mm -hmm. start with. Yeah. But, but, you know, we don't realize that they're buying Australian lobsters now. They're right. an inferior lobster. They right. don't have claws. Right. And it's only an hour and a half closer to Beijing than we are. Australian, please. Right. Uh, okay, cost of doing business. That's yeah. the big issue. The Maine Development Foundation, the Maine State Chamber of Commerce did a recent study and did some uh, surveys of businesses, thousands of businesses throughout the state. And they ranked uh, neg uh, the negative impact of health care costs is number one on their business, negative impact of energy costs is number two, and the negative impact of the cost of regulations number three. We have a video, a question from one of our viewers that we're going to play for you and have you respond to about Great. regulations. Good. So check this out. How you doing? My name is Dennis Kearney. I'm the plant manager with FMC Biopolymer in Rockland, Maine. Um, FMC Corporation is a major chemical corporation. We're very diverse, and I work in the specialty chemicals group. Here in Rockland, we are a carrageenan manufacturer, so we take seaweed and we extract carrageenan, and it's really a food ingredient. Um, my question for you is, we work hard every day here in Maine to control our costs. Everything that we can control, we do. But the one thing that we cannot control is regulation. So specifically, what will you do as governor to help control our costs? You know, I, I visited with good question. I've, let me just say, I, I visited the FMC plant in Rockland. Mm -hmm. I've, I, I met Dennis. I've walked around that plant. They do a great job. They're great people, great employees, and that plant has a great future. But Dennis is right. We've got. A, I've been talking about exactly what MDF and the chamber talked about in their report. I've been talking about it for a year and a half. And you can go back and look at my announcement speech in December. I talked about the cost of energy 
cost of health care and the cost of delivering public services. We've got to cut all three. We've got to get the cost structure down. We do it by, by, a, by an energy financing authority and a contract. Well, do you want to get into the yeah, details? Specific, you don't. No, I do, but specifically, let's talk about regulation. Regulation. We'll come back I've, to energy. I propose, the, I've said the first day in office, I'm going to sign an executive order that's going to create in the office of the governor an office of regulatory review and repeal. Okay. And the person who heads that office is going to be called the grim repealer. And we're going to take a look at all of the regulations. We're going to listen to people on every side of every issue in the state of Maine who are trying to do business in the state of Maine, who are trying to participate uh, on boards and so forth in the state of Maine. We're going to say, what is making it hard to do business? What is, what is nonsensical? What doesn't work? What is ineffective? What costs too much? And we're well, going to look at the business and environmentalists and everybody, You name it. Because everyone in Maine, I've heard from everyone in Maine, whom I've spoken with over the course of the last year and a half, we can't stand it. We can't take it anymore. Okay. L let me follow up on that question with the uh, one of the things you've mentioned is that you've proposed getting rid of the Board of Environmental Protection. I have. Uh, and taking that regulation function out of LERC and keep it, keeping the planning function. And yes. you say that we shouldn't have licensing and planning in the same agency. I guess my question that one is about about the overall regulation. The Brookings Institute study of Maine, was it four? Growth Smart. Yeah, Growth Smart four or five years ago right, now. Three times. Um, good. Uh, not to oversimplify, but a core piece of that is they're saying maintain your quality of place. Correct. That, that is the number one economic advantage that we really have. Biggest competitive advantage. Can we have looser regulations and maintain quality yeah, look, of place? Yeah, look, here's, here's what some of my opponents don't understand. Okay. There is a different, I've got the longest and, and deepest environmental record of anybody in this race. I helped write the Clean Air Act, mm -hmm. Clean Water Act. I was associate director of OMB for Natural Resources, Energy, and Science. I built the biggest, second biggest environmental and land use law firm in the country. Okay, I know mm -hmm. this stuff. I've done it. What people, other, but some of my opponents don't understand is that there is a difference between tough regulations, which we need in Maine to protect our asset, and the way we administer and enforce those regulations. That's a, they're, they're two different issues. Right now, we not only have good, tough regulations, most of them are good and tough, but, but we also have an administration and an enforcement process that in too many respects is unpredictable, untimely, standardless. Can, can you give an example of that? Sure. When, the, when, when after, the, after the DEP okay. had, had, had uh, certified, uh, provided to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission water quality certification mm -hmm. for the dams on the Kennebec River, Someone asked them to reopen the certification proceeding yeah. for to look at whether eels could make it up the up, up the river. It's an important issue whether eels can make it up the river. But you know something, FERC had already acted on it. FERC had already permitted and licensed relicensed the dams. The the they reopened B, uh, BEP the board, mm -hmm. not the department. Right. Reopened the whole proceeding, or or uh, listened to yeah. a petition. They had hearings for days expert witnesses, lawyers, on and on and on, cost everybody a lot of money. Okay. Good, example. Good example. And nothing happened. Okay. We're going to wrap this segment here. Uh, we are going to come back, though. We're going to keep you around for an afterthought segment that's going to be seen on the web. And Great. we're going to talk Great. more about health care, energy costs, taxes, unfunded employee uh, retirement system, all those all things. All in just a few minutes. You've got plenty of time. <laughs> Stick with us. You can catch more of this discussion in our exclusive afterthought segment seen only on the web. We'll keep Mr. Cutler around to drill down even deeper on regulations, taxes, and energy costs. Just go to mainbiz.biz and click on the Main Biz Sunday link. We'll be right back. Main Biz Sunday is made possible in part by funding provided by the Finance Authority of Maine.